Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a VLOOKUP that's going to allow us to return the nth match from a data set. So to do this, we're going to need the new dynamic array functions in Excel. And if you want to follow along with this video, you can get the workbook that I'm using in the description below. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. Now let's get started. So we've got a small data set here and in it, we're going to be looking up our category ID and the category ID actually has some duplicate values here. So we see, for example, ID seven, a couple of dimes in our data set. And what we want to do is look up the product based on the category ID in this data set. So with VLOOKUP, we're only going to be able to return the first match. So we're only going to be able to return this row of data, but with some of the new dynamic array functions, we can actually get the nth match now. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So first off, we're going to use the if function and with the new dynamic array functions, we actually get a new calculation engine for Excel under the hood. And this means that a lot of the old functions are now able to become dynamic arrays themselves. So let's take a look at that. Let's use the if function. And what we're going to do is we're going to test our category ID in our data set and see if that's equal to the category that we're trying to find. And just as a little placeholder, let's put a one and a zero in there. So it's going to return one when that's true and zero when it's false. And you can see that that if function now spills down our range. And that's because of the new calculation engine behind the scenes. So right now we're trying to look for category ID number five, and we can see that whenever we have a one here, that's where we have a category ID five. But what we want to do is order these matches. And we're going to use the sequence function to do that. So instead of a one here, what we're going to do is use the sequence function. And that's one of the new dynamic arrays, and it's going to allow us to create an array of any dimension. And so we're going to use that just to create a list of uh, values from one to however many rows of data we have. So for us, that's 20 rows of data, and we just want to return one column in our sequence. And we're going to start at one and we're going to increment that by one. So you can see now where we had our matches, we start at one and then each cell is incrementing by one, except for where we ha don't have a match. We still have a zero and here we have a match. Now we're up to nine and 15 and 17. And of course we don't want to hard code this 20 here as if we add new data into our table, that's not going to work anymore. So we're going to use the rows function and just count how many rows of data we have in our table. And it actually turns out that these values here in our sequence function. So those are optional arguments. And when you don't include them, they actually default to one. So just to simplify this, we're going to remove that. And we end up with the same result here. Now to find our nth item, what we're going to use is the small function. And the small function is going to allow us to return the kth smallest value in an array. Now, because we've got a lot of zeros here, our kth smallest value is actually going to be this zero most of the time. So what we want to do is instead of having a zero there, we're just going to have uh, something that's not a number. And that way, any of our things that are a match are going to be the only numbers in our array. And then, for example, when we try and find the second smallest value in this example, it'll be 15. So let's just press escape. Let's come down here and instead of zero, what we're going to do 
is put an empty text string in there. And now we just have numbers whenever we have a match. And now if we use the small function around this, and try and find our item number in that, and for example, our third match was 15. And our first match was number one. So right here, our first match is the first row. And our second match down here is the ninth row. So if we put two in here, we should get a nine right there, which is what we get. So now we can get the position of our matches. And this is something that we can now use in VLOOKUP. So this nine is from the sequence function, but we don't actually have the sequence in our original set of data in order to use VLOOKUP to look that up. So what we're also going to need to do is create a new table to look in. And we can use the choose function to do that. And the choose function is going to allow us to create a new table of two columns. So the first column is going to be our sequence. And let's again reference our table. And our second column is going to be the thing we're trying to find. So we're going to try and find our product. And if we press enter, what we get is a new table of data. And the first column is our sequence of values. And our second column is our product. And now we can find nine in this table. So nine will give us this product here. So mountain uh, 200 silver 46. So let's wrap this in a VLOOKUP. And this is the value we're trying to look up. And just to save ourselves some formula writing, let's just copy this and come back here and try this again. So VLOOKUP, we're going to look up this value and we're going to look it up in this new table that we've just created. And we're going to return the second column and we're going to do an exact match. And there we go. So let's just cut and paste this over here. So now we're looking up category ID five and we're looking up the second item in our data set. So here's item number one and here's item number two. And the product for that is our mountain 200 silver 46. And that's exactly what we have now. Let's try and find category 27. So here's our first 27. And again, we're still looking for our second uh, record. So here's our first and here's our second and it's racing socks M. And that's what we have up here. Now we're going to do something a little bit more. So with these new dynamic array functions and the new calculation engine, as we mentioned before, most functions can now spill. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is use that to return all the values in our record. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it as a formula down here. And if we want to return all the records, what we can do is instead of this single value input, what we can do is put an array of values in there, and then that's going to return uh, multiple values for us. So right now we're just looking up in a two column table. So it, we could put an array uh, that contains one and two. And then we're going to get a VLOOKUP that spills. So here we're returning uh, this value. So 18 and racing socks M. But let's just edit our 
uh, table here so that we have some more fields from our original data set. So instead of the orders and just the product field, what we're going to do is reference our entire table. And now instead of choosing two columns, so here's column one and here's column two, what we're going to do is add some more columns in there. So our original data set has uh, one, two, three, four, and five columns. And so we want one, two, three, four, and five columns. So I've actually entered one too many here. And let's press enter, see what happens. We're still only spilling two of those columns. So let's just edit this. And there we go. We're now retrieving the entire record from our data set. So we have the category, the product, the quantity, and the total. And let's just play around with this a little bit. Let's get category five. And again, our second record. So that should be mountain bikes, uh, mountain 200 silver 46, quantity of two and 2,783. And that's exactly what we have right here. Notice our first value in our record is actually from the sequence and not the category ID. These functions here, they're mostly just for fun and for learning, because if you really wanted to return an entire record, you would use the new filter function to do that. So let's just delete this. And if we use the filter function, what we would do is reference our entire data set and then filter on category ID and set that equal to our category that we're looking for. And that's it. And that's going to return all the records in our data set that match our category that we're looking for. So here we've got four. Let's look for category 27. Here we've just got three records. Let's try out category seven. So that's how we can create a VLOOKUP that's gonna return the nth match for us. And we can also create a VLOOKUP that's gonna return the entire record for that match. But with the new filter function, it's a little bit redundant and more for fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. See you guys next time.